What's hiding underneath things can be scary. Underwater, under your bed, especially what's under your carpet. Except when you get new carpet from Carpet One Floor and Home. After tearing up your old carpet, they'll vacuum and apply Healthinex antimicrobial to your subfloor, disinfecting and killing mold, mildew, and any remaining general awfulness. Carpet One Floor and Home goes the extra mile to protect you, your family, and your home. Carpet One Floor and Home in Columbia, making your home beautiful, guaranteed. Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Tuesday, January the 22nd. Good to have you with us today. We have Loretta Scouten with us with Como Youth Work. Good to have you here, Loretta Scouten. Thank you. And Thanks I did pronounce having... the last name right, didn't <laughs> you I? Did, you That's did. That's why I, I had to say it twice because I've been mispronouncing <laughs> it. But... Uh, you're here from Como Youth Works. Explain, first of all, what Como Youth Works is. Okay. Well, we've been in our community for 15 years now, serving those youth and young adults in greatest need. Um, we do education and employment services, making sure our kids graduate high school and get a job, not only just a job, but a good job that they retain and they can access those career ladders so they can be self-sufficient and get out of poverty. Yeah. Besides that, and, and you're, you're affecting a lot of people, aren't yeah. you? Over the years, would you just have off the top of your head, how many young people you've helped? Oh, my gosh. Um, thousands. Thousands. Literally, we have gotten thousands of kids off the streets, out of the gangs, graduated high school, and into jobs. And they're now married with families and children, and they're great citizens of our community. And some of those, some of those young people that you've helped are coming back to help you yeah, and actually, other young people, right? Yes, quite a few of them come back, and we have them talk to the kids we work with now because there's nothing like hearing that story saying, I was where you were. I know exactly what you're doing. I know what that feels like. I know what you're going through, and you can make it out too. Do you find that when somebody comes back and says that, that they're, the, the ones they're talking to, their ears kind of pick up, and yeah. it's it's making more sense to them than someone like you telling them that? Yeah, absolutely, because it comes from sincerity, right? I mean, I can talk to kids um, about how hard it is to live in poverty, but I didn't, I've didn't. i never lived in poverty. I, I don't really know what that's like. Um, and to have somebody come back and say, no, I've been exactly where you were. I know your challenges. I know how hard it is every single day. But hang in there. But hang in there, yeah. And so those kids really identify with our success stories when they come back and they say, oh my gosh, like, yeah, I can be you i can do this too and it's inspiring it's motivational and just it's it's makes them feel like they're not alone because poverty can be very very um it really singles you out and isolates you in a lot of ways and for these kids and young adults to know it's not just me that someone else has been here too and walked in these footsteps they i would imagine many of many of them living in poverty think that nobody cares right right because a lot of our poverty in this um, city is invisible a lot of folks don't see it they don't see our homeless because they don't live in your neighborhood they're not in you know they're not out in the neighborhoods where you and I live um, they're in our woods and they're in camps and we don't see them and so if you don't out of sight out of mind is a phrase for a reason right we were talking about that with uh, 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 welcome home veterans yes that there are some people living, some veterans are living in the woods. Yeah, absolutely. Because they have no place to go. Absolutely. Uh, and we, you wanted to talk today a little bit about incarceration in Missouri. I do. Um, Missouri leads the nation. We're the number one in terms of we are incarcerating our women faster than any other state in our country. Why um, do you think that is? I think it's our policies. I think we've got a lot. It's our, It comes down to our state enforcement policies. Um, if you have a drug addiction, we're going to put you in prison for it rather than put you into a community-based treatment center where you can get some help and get Wait, clean. Are you saying that anyone, anyone who has a drug addiction is going to go to prison? I'm saying um, the second highest crime that we incarcerate people for is a drug addiction. It's either drug distribution, possession, or use. And that's the second highest um, crime that we incarcerate folks for. And we're incarcerating women, which is having devastating effects on our family. Not to say that our men are any less important. They are equally important. But when you incarcerate um, the mother of a child, 
um, you profoundly impact that child's ability to not only thrive in their community, in their school, in their neighborhood. Um, we have foster ch foster rates. Our, our rates of children in foster care are rising dramatically, and it's because we're incarcerating the caregivers. So what is the solution here? So we've got to, it's Partially, it's about our enforcement policies. Um, we've got to give people the right help at the right time instead of um, waiting for them to get too far down that road. So when we see somebody and they need help with a substance abuse issue, let's go get them community-based help. Let's not throw them in um, the system and get them system-based help because Missouri also has one of the highest recidivism rates in the nation. So we know once you get into the system, the criminal justice system, your odds of going back to that system are 54%. So and that's you a pretty have a high. better than 50-50 chance that once you're in, even when you get out, you're going to end up back again. Right. Right, and so your odds are stacked against you. So even if you get out and you're doing everything you can, the odds are still against you that you're gonna make it. The odds are you're gonna go back to that system. So again, community-based help is what yes. we need. Yes, yes. How do we increase that? So one thing we're doing at Como Youth Works is building wraparound services. Um, so we have a great location on Fay Street, and we have a big building. And so we've got partners coming in to provide substance abuse services, mental health services. Um, we do those employment and education services. So it's that one-stop shop. There's a reason the Walmart model works. You know, we all go to Walmart so because we can get everything we need in one stop. And we need to start providing our treatment centers like that. So you go to one place and you're going to get your substance abuse and your mental health counseling and your employment support and your educational support in one stop. And So that's you're doing building. all of that in your building on Faith Street. We're doing that in our building, but we don't provide all of it. And that's where that collaboration piece is so important to providing, to building success for these folks comes in. So we've got Burrell coming in to provide their, they're the experts at mental health services. So they'll come in and provide those um, exceptional mental health What about health drug services. abuse? We've got Phoenix coming in to provide exceptional substance abuse services. Um, so we work with those experts in those fields. All are those organizations providing that service free of charge? They are not. So they're still billing like they normally bill. Um, but what we need with the new legislative session, what we need our state legislators to do is to provide funding for Boone County because Boone County has become the center hub of our state. Um, all of the rural areas that surround Columbia and Boone County, those folks are coming to Columbia for services and they can't afford to live here. So they're coming from Harrisburg and Hart in Mexico and all these other cities around us to get services. Um, but the state hasn't provided resources for us to appropriately okay. provide that. If people want to help out or they want more information, how they can get involved, what do they do? Give us a call, 573-256-1896, or go to our website at comoyouthworks.org. comoyouthworks.org. Yes. And that'll give you all the information you need. You can get involved there. You can make a donation there. Yes. You can make a donation of your time and effort if you want to. Yes. Loretta Skelton, thank you so much <laughs> for coming by. And please come back again, will I you? I will. Thanks all for right. having me.